the beauty in it is that because you allow yourself to be vulnerable after you've written down your thoughts or like put it out in a song i think it does give some kind of release because at least the thought is out there and you kind of kind of release it from your mind uh and also just with everybody who's had an early listen a lot of them like yo man this is exactly how i feel as well or yeah man i didn't think about that this is this is this is dope so i'm like okay cool so i was vulnerable but it's kind of and the worst thing is to be vulnerable and people reject that you know oh, if you yeah. said oh it's what i'm struggling with and someone told you oh that's not a struggle You're like oh okay oh, then. Okay. <laughs> 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 exactly <laughs> Today on the show, we're joined with hip hop artist K The Chosen. K is just about to release his new album, Plus Vice, that is available everywhere on Friday, October 22nd. This was such a great introspective talk about the concept of the album and just life in general. Around making music, K is also a teacher, an ambassador for Science Genius, which is a program founded by Jizza of the Wu Tang Clan teaches the youth from grades 7 to 9 how to rap while teaching them about science. How cool is that? K The Chosen is actually born in Zimbabwe as well and moved to Calgary very recently. A lot of perspective, a lot of experience, and this was just a fun conversation. But I could praise it over and over again, but why don't you just listen to it right now? How are you doing today? Really good. Um, it's been a good start to the week. The weather's awesome. I don't know what the weather's like in, um, you're in Toronto, right? Ah uh, yes, um, yeah. it got it got really cold for the last couple of weeks, but then just yesterday and today it felt like a little bit of summer. So uh, I'm happy. I, after this, I got to get back outside again too. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of what it's been like on our end, where uh, the forecast had said last week was going to be um, our last week of like sunshine and stuff, and then suddenly we've just been having like 23, 22 degrees. I'm like, you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> like, yeah, I love summer yeah. weather, so I won't complain. <laughs> Yeah, the days are counting down, and even uh, I was I was scrolling around on social media, like uh, just kind of waiting to join the Zoom call. I saw like yeah. some headline that Toronto was supposed to have. Like, I I just read the beginning of the headline. It's like yeah. the worst winter in this many. T- I'm just like I don't even want to see it. I don't want to know. I didn't click on the article. Or <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's my vibe today. Just living in the moment, and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And exciting times for you too. You got an album coming out real, real soon. How you real, doing? real soon. Um, super excited. I'm not gonna lie, a bit tired. Um, because I, I, you know, I wrote the music. I reached out to all the collaborators. Um, I'm the one who's like in contact with most peeps. So, it's like exciting because it's nice to see all the work come to fruition. But I'm also like, okay. We still have like a month's work of work to do and then it's yeah. out. But to be honest, the response, people are excited. Um, we put out the album artwork and the track list yesterday and people are like, yo, this this looks good. We're excited. And then oh. all the singles that have come out thus far have been well received. So yeah, I'm excited. fantastic. Yeah. And um, I got a, the early listen to it too. And I want to say it's it's smooth, man. It sounds Thank great. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. Uh, am I allowed to ask, do you have any like... Um, personal favorites um so i put it on and i wasn't paying attention to the to the track names and okay. i just let it play i was as i was doing stuff around the house but for sure one thing uh i, I remember what was the what was the name of the first track actually uh like like the interlude or the, like the actual the, first like song? after the in, after the, interlude, uh yeah. food for thought yes I, I i feel like i really like that one a lot like nice. i feel like that's a good way to kick it off and it kind of uh sets the tone of the record too you yes. got a very uh conscious style and yeah um what i appreciate about uh your work as well is mm-hmm. you're going in it seems like you're going in with like you have a message for each yeah. one of these tracks and yes. different stories and stuff and what kind of drew you into that kind of style of mm-hmm. rapping so um i listen to all kinds of music but i have a strong bias towards hip-hop and for me, what I love about hip hop is the fact that you learn so much. Uh, so I tend to uh, gravitate towards more st- storyteller type rappers. So people like Kendrick Lamar, uh, J. Cole, Lupe Fiasco, uh, because not only are they like amazing lyricists, but, you know, whether or not you've lived in Compton or know what it's like to be um uh i can't think of another story but uh, mm-hmm. like just just if you're it's, it's a story from outside of your world but after listening to it you feel like you understand that neighborhood better or you understand that experience better 
And I think for me, it's something that I've always taken away from music where I think the best music or the music that really sticks with you is the one that tells a story. Because even if the sound of music changes, even if the beats are changing or the way that people rap changes, the story will always live on no matter how the environment is changing. So for me, I love to be able to tell a story and then Usually it tends to be a bit more personal in terms of whether something I've experienced or this is something that I've seen as a friend go through. But this time I wanted it to be more of um, social commentary, right? We've all been in lockdown, what's going on in the world right now and what are the familiar experiences that we're all going through. So I wanted to find a way to make sure that each song in itself told a story, but when you put them together, you get this gigantic message and story. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, very conceptual mind going into it, I see. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's really, really cool. And even to go further back in time, what uh, drew you into wanting to be an MC and use rap as an expression to tell stories and everything like that? First of all, it's just cool, man. I think yeah. it's just really cool when Facts. you hear a rapper or you see an MC spinning or you see someone break dancing. So I think hip hop is just such a really cool culture. Um, I went to an old boys uh, high school, so it was either you're a sporting person or you're super cultural, you do speech drama and all that kind of thing, uh, or you're very academic. So I kind of went through all three fields. I think I started off fairly academic and then I was a bit sporty and then I kind of ended up in the cultural uh, space because I love speech and drama um, and I love making music and I found that it was the one thing that um, used to unite us on like days when we we're feeling down or days we were super excited where, you know, we'll just meet up at the lockers, people would just start banging on the lockers and we start freestyling. Mm. So I think it's just the excitement of the energy with it, uh, as well as that it's just something to really, e really easy to pick up and go with, you know, where um, sometimes some other mediums uh, in terms of art, you know, you might need to have studied a bit of uh, visual art to understand, okay, this is what they're meaning in the brushstroke, or this is how Monet is different from <laughs> Van Gogh, you know, I kind of yeah. think it's music, it's just, you hear it, and if you vibe with it, you just, you get into it, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's great, and uh, what I love about hip-hop, too, and uh, being an MC, besides, like, having to rhyme everything, there's really no template other than that like you yeah. have the freedom to just kind of go where you want on a blank state slate and just kind of make your own style and everything yeah. and uh with some of the like the greatest ones are the people who I don't know you, you almost can't compare them to anybody else in a way yeah. too and, yeah and I, I feel like you're doing your own thing as well which is really cool Thank you. I've tried. Like it's it's been a couple of years of experimenting with different things, trying to figure okay, what works, what do I like, um, and I think that's another thing I like about hip hop, where like you said, there's no set format, there's no one thing you have to stick to, but the fact that I find the crowd tends to give pretty good feedback. So I'll perform a song live, and I'm like, oh, I like this, or I don't like that. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Now I know how to work on for the next song. So it's definitely been a growing process to kind of come to this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, uh, yeah. So. It's 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 crazy times. I don't know um how the scene with venues are in Calgary right now. Are things starting to open up and everything? Uh, it's it's weird. <laughs> so yeah, things too. were opening up, and then uh we've had a couple of restrictions that came up recently. So essentially, the way that I've been looking at it is that um, for any artist or anyone who performs, the best time to perform like over these last two years has been spring and uh, summer because you know the weather is better so outdoors venues are more available so you're allowed to perform more often because what, what i found is that within fall we've got such fluctuating numbers that it starts off for the first two weeks everything's open and then something changes so the current condition that we're in right now is that in order to be attending indoor things so if you want to eat in or whatever uh, you have to have like a vaccination passport or at least some kind of proof of, of vaccination um, so obviously that's fine if you as an artist are vaccinated and your audience um, are vaccinated, but for those who aren't and aren't willing to do like a COVID test or whatever, uh, you end up missing out on those people. So yeah, it's a bit of a mix. I think other people have just stuck to like online performances or they do a hybrid where they'll perform um, in person and then stream part of it. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been up and down. It's been very, very strange this year. Yeah, really tricky times too. And like, yeah, yeah just uh, the past week, they mandated the vaccine thing here. Exactly. And it was funny, uh, the other week, I went to a stand up comedy show too. And uh, 
half uh, or one comedian was like ripping on everybody because I guess like half the comedians couldn't get in because they only got wow. single vaxxed. Wow. And you need like a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so it was they got the person turned it into like a good joke, like just being okay, like, good. oh, they're all like sitting on the sidewalk right now. <laughs> and, just, <laughs> and saying like how com- like artists in general, like they're we're always like last minute and incompetent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I kind of want to know like uh, a bit of your process when going into making something like an album like this uh does it start with a song do you have a, a, the whole picture in mind uh, like how do you jump into this so it usually starts with the idea uh so i don't even remember so I, I remember bits and pieces of how you know when an idea grows so big you actually forget where it started you just yeah have <laughs> always had this idea you get um, lost in the muse in a way yeah you know? <laughs> Exactly. So this one kind of started off with uh, my best friend lives in Australia and um, he has a group of friends that he always sees um, pretty regularly. So they happen to all be female. So every time he went to their place, like, oh, I'm going to the sister's place. So him and I um, tend to communicate over voice notes just because there's like a 14 hour difference uh, between a uh, time difference between here and Australia. So anytime I got a voice note from him, like, oh, yeah, I'm just getting back from the sisters or I'm going to the sister's place. And it became such an ongoing theme. I was like, you know, I'd love to have some kind of concept album that revolves around this house party that happens at the sister's place and we get to learn about them or something. And that's pretty much where the main um, idea of having, uh, you know, it's narrated by women came from, as well as the fact that each of them are kind of talking about the same person, but you don't really meet the person because you're kind of getting this... uh, the story is being told, but from the perspective of someone else, you know, and especially in um, in death, I guess you only live on through other people's words. You're not there to tell your own story. So once that clicked in my mind, I was like, hey, that's cool. But why would people want to listen to such a grim topic? <laughs> you know, like no one wants to be like, oh yeah, I want to listen to death today. It's like, nah, <laughs> let's find a way to make it interesting. So I figured, you know, kind of make it like, Um, a murder mystery kind of thing where we're kind of getting clues at each song into what might have been stressing this person out or what could have impacted their lives. So I had this idea before the pandemic and then lockdown started. And I think because I was at home so much, I was just observing what's going on in the world right now, where people's minds at. And I noticed that, okay, grief is coming up a lot because we lost Kobe, we lost um, Chadwick Boseman. And those were like a global experience of grief because you're such respected people just globally. Um, But then after that, I started hearing more personal news where like, you know, I had friends and family who were losing people to COVID. So it felt like a topic that I couldn't not talk about, but also something that really made me reflect on, okay, what does it mean when we're grieving? How do we process that? So a lot of times um, I have the concept and then I kind of have how I'm feeling at the time. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of marry those two together and then slowly the songs start writing themselves. So I might write a couple of lyrics. I might have an idea for a song. And then I start talking to like all my my friends who are producers. And it's weird. I feel like... um, a lot of it was very just like the stars aligned and that I'll be chilling and be like, oh, this is a really cool song I've got in mind. What kind of beat does it need? And then the next day, a friend would text me and be like, hey, man, I just made this dope beat. I think you love it. Here it is. Mm-hmm. And they'll send it. And I'm like, yeah, this is this is the one. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, perfect. You go. Yeah. I love when things <laughs> so, like fall in place like that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of it was just the idea and the feeling was there. And then the rest of it kind of just figured itself out. And then once I had um, the main ideas down, I started just like recording references so I could hear how it was developing. So I had an idea of how the project was gonna sound before I even recorded it properly the first time. Um, And then made it easier to reach out to friends to collaborate because I was like, okay, cool. This is the direction the song is going. And I've got a lot of friends who are rappers or producers. And I was like, you know what? I know this song is perfect for your voice. This Mm. um, interlude is great for your, personality because I know that you might um, relate with this character on a more personal level so when you deliver this skit it's going to be more believable that's really really cool it's cool to hear you break that down like that as well and it's it's uh it's great how you kind of had this idea at the beginning of what it's going to be but also stay loose and open for it to just flow and change and 
do what you feel in the moment too like especially you mentioned like in the past year of like just this whole pandemic kind of giving you different feelings and stuff and just incorporating that into the to the album and making it a, a real piece that's that's yeah. awesome yeah and the best way to relate to people is kind of tell them what you're going through because chances are they're going through something similar right so it'll resonate mm -hmm. with them yeah that's that's facts too even uh <laughs> i find like uh moments of maybe like i feel like oh maybe i shouldn't say this i feel super vulnerable and then i put it out there maybe like a little facebook status and, and then like those are the times you get like the messages of people is just like hey like <laughs> like that realness do you ever feel like um yeah. vulnerability putting out uh certain types of lyrics and everything Oh, all the time. Like, yeah. I think that's the one video I love about collaboration because you already have someone else in the room with you to be like, oh, I don't know about that line there. Or, yo, man, that's super real. Like, I appreciate you sharing that. And I definitely felt that vulnerability. Um, I don't know. I don't know how, like, how much of this I want to spoil for people, but yeah. just the whole topic of grief, I think, is one of those things that I actually never really thought about myself. Um, it had come up once or twice in my life, but I never really thought about, okay, how do we process grief? So, you know, I really had to get into that space and think about, okay, cool. Like, what does grief mean to me? How does it affect people around me? Um, and in some ways, you know, how am I going to feel when I no longer exist? You know, and it's, it's like an eerie thing to think about during a pandemic because like it wasn't a foreign idea. It wasn't very far away. Like it's literally happening, happening around you. Um, but the beauty in it is that because you allow yourself to be vulnerable after you've written down your thoughts or like put it out in a song, I think it does give some kind of release because at least the thought is out there and you've kind of kind of released it from your mind. Uh, and also just with everybody who's had an early listen, a lot of them like, yo, man, this is exactly how I feel as well. Or damn, man, I didn't think about that. This is this is this is dope. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I was vulnerable, but it's kind of I think the worst thing is to be vulnerable and people reject that you know oh, if you yeah. said oh it's what I'm struggling with and someone told you oh that's not a struggle you'd be like oh okay <laughs> oh then. shit okay <laughs> fuck me then <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah yeah but no that actually sounds like very therapeutic as well like yeah as a writing process too and most definitely feedback and I find topics like that too it's almost human nature where we try to like our thoughts run away from that when we start like thinking about it and I yeah. love and appreciate how you leaned into it it's like yo I'm I'm really gonna think about my mortality <laughs> and death and and I don't know I, I find like uh you can just even just beyond music just grow as a person kind of yes exploring those certain thoughts that make you uncomfortable and maybe make you feel comfortable with them as well yeah yeah no, I agree. And I think um, that's something that I'm actually hoping this project does where, uh, you know, of course, I want people to love the music, but then afterwards, have a talk about it. Like if there's a certain mm -hmm. song that uh, really struck a chord with you, ask yourself why and maybe talk to other people that maybe it affects. So, uh, for example, like Dear African Fathers, um, we actually put that out on, Afri um, on uh, Father's Day. And it was interesting because I did... Um, another podcast interview that day with a couple of other artists and um one of the artists that was there was like you know this song really touched me because I have an estranged uh relationship with my dad and after that she went and reached out to him and I don't know where oh, with wow. I didn't I didn't I didn't follow up but you know literally just hearing the song once made her think you know what it's it's worth reaching out and trying to fix that and if I can do that for each person who listens I'm like awesome like the music is doing something beyond just being uh an entertaining thing yeah that's so powerful man and yeah yeah kudos and even like as an artist that's got to feel so good to get that kind of feedback because i'm sure sometimes you make these tunes and you don't expect that in a way yeah. and then it just maybe you get a message from somebody and it's like wow like it just kind of gives you an extra like i don't know what the word is like maybe like a a validity to yeah, it yeah like yeah yeah something it's like, very like, you know, validating like, for like, sure yeah this is like actually affecting people in a way yeah yeah it's a beautiful thing it is it is it's also kind of scary though because i was like wow my words have power <laughs> yeah. What I say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you don't want to be a bad influence there you go yeah, yeah. yeah. Your yeah. Vibe. yeah. <laughs> stay in school kids <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah the next the next album is just going to be one big psa <laughs> yeah 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 i think I, I, I think that's something that 
I'm trying to navigate now. It's like, hey, cool. What is the next album about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's cool. This one's not out yet, so you guys. Yeah, yeah. Time, Sometimes, yeah, yeah. No, no need to stress about it right now. But yeah. definitely, I'm always like forward thinking. Like, cool. We did this. What follows this? Um. Yeah. Yeah. So just it's just a thought at the back of my mind. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Also, uh, I was reading that uh, you also do like some youth programs as well, teaching kids how to rap and yeah, stuff like that. Can you tell me a little bit about that? For sure. So that's something that, again, just honestly, I'm going to keep saying this collaboration and community is awesome because you get connected to so many different people. So I'm part of um, this community event called um, Cypher Club. And essentially all it is, it's just a bunch of rappers in the city. They meet once a week and we just freestyle for like a couple of hours. And that's, that's it. That's all we're doing. But because we're all artists, like, you know, you might hear someone like, oh, you know, that's a dope flow you've got there. Let's work on a song or, oh, you um, seem to have an interest in this. Let's work together. So through that community, um, I ended up meeting uh, an artist named Rebecca Dorn. And she works with uh, Beakerhead. They're like a science organization. They teach kids and um, they make science fun. And they have partnered with um, Science Genius. And Science Genius is a program that was started by, um, now I'm thinking, is it the Jizza or the Rizza? I think it was the Jizza of of, um, Wu-Tang Clan. And essentially what it is, is they just noticed that, you know, a lot of kids in New York, you know, depending on what neighborhood you're from, are at a disadvantage when it comes to school in that you might be, you might be taught in a very academic way, uh, which might not appeal to artistic kids. So what they decided was the best way to teach kids about science is to make it fun. And they created the Science Genius Program, which essentially you go into these classrooms, you learn about whatever the kids are learning, and then alongside them learning science, you teach them how to rap about science. So for example... Ooh if this term you're learning about photosynthesis, um, I'll come in, sit in, listen to what you're, you're learning, just that I'm also teaching how to write about things that are relevant. Uh, and then I'll teach how, how rap works. You know, like this is how you structure a verse, this is how you structure a hook. And then we'll work together on building a song about photosynthesis. Let's make a hook that talks about the process. Can you break it down in the verse? What science vocabulary are we using? And Rebecca Dorn brought me on to do that this year. And it was so much fun because I, it's one thing to rap. It's another thing to explain how to do it. You then realize, wait, how do I do this? Like, I'm so used to just doing it. Yeah, you know, yeah. So teaching is just so rewarding because I think it helps strengthen whatever skills you already have. And the kids just have so many amazing ideas. So, you know, we taught them about like call and response hooks or melodic hooks. And, you know, they just ran with it and created some very amazing songs. And then right after the Science Genius program ended, because I'd now been um, exposed to the educator um, realm of Calgary, I got asked to do Antics Arts, which is another teaching program. And essentially all they do is once a week, um, they just meet with the kids after school and they just freestyle about different things, but they get uh, guest artists to come in and kind of hold workshops during that, that, that meeting. So they told me, you can come in and teach whatever you want. And... I love storytelling. So I was like, you know what? I want to talk about branding and marketing because I think these kids are probably very talented, which they were. Like I was blown away by their level of rap skills. Um, Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, cool, you've got skills. Now let's teach you how to market them so that you um, are not at a disadvantage where you've got the talent, but don't know how to expose it to to the rest of the world. And that's pretty much what I do with Antics Arts. I love all of that that is so cool even that's making me wish like I had a program like that growing up too because I feel like like I love that you mentioned that this science program realizes some kids kind of have more of like an artistic way of thinking and that's the way to communicate and teach them too because I don't know my experience of going to school it was very dull and I feel like Mm -hmm. even if it was like presented to me in a way like that like spit some bars about the periodic table or something maybe maybe I remember it because even like I find I can remember like song lyrics from 25 years ago but then something I can I'll I'll start reading like an article on like something like super boring and be like just gone in like three seconds you know or like just sitting in a boring lecture or whatever that's amazing especially like getting hands-on and I can see like the benefit 
even though you're like teaching kids all this stuff, uh, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, uh, breaking down the art form, it's something mm -hmm. you're, you've been doing naturally all this time. It's like taking a moment to be like, how do I really do this? And then <laughs> I can see that even bringing personal growth to yourself as well. 100%. As, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's very rewarding. And I think, like you said, like I was, to be honest, kind of jealous. I was like, this is not fair. How come you guys get this? I didn't have yeah. any cool mentors like this. Like, yeah. imagine where I would be as an artist if, you know, I had someone come into my class and say, hey, man, I know you're learning science. Let's make a song about it. And like you said, just the memory thing, because rap is all about patches, right? So if you made something about the periodic table, as long as it rhymes at the end, remembering those notes would be so easy because like okay if this word has to rhyme with this the answer must be ah oh, hydrogen cool and then you carry on with the, the exam so yeah. i think be cool yeah that's so fire too and i can imagine too uh some kids too will start getting a larger appreciation for the art of hip-hop as well there you go um being hands-on and doing it themselves whether they aspire to be a rapper or not you know yeah yeah and it's, it's awesome. I think um, we, we try to draw a lot of parallels between the two things as well. Like with science, it's all about experimentation. You know, there might be a process for how you set up an experiment, but it's just from doing and learning. And it's the same in hip hop. Like we said, there's no, there's no set way to do it, but you can experiment with different flows, different beats, different topics. And then you find the one that works for you and you just keep going with it. So I think for those who maybe were more artsy, now have an appreciation for science too because they're getting an idea of oh, okay cool if i look at science this way it's not as boring or as difficult as it may have seemed before yeah definitely yeah, yeah. even yeah. yeah i'm just thinking that's just so awesome i never knew something like that existed and uh especially it's extra cool factor that it's founded by somebody like the jizz you know right i'm like <laughs> technically technically i work for the wu-tang clan yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> i'm like very far removed but uh, <laughs> technically <laughs> this is put the, the w on your business cards and stuff oh yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah. i'm an unofficial member <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's amazing did you grow yeah. up listening to wu-tang at all or? so the weird thing is um I grew up listening to everybody around them. So um, I love Diggable Planets. I love um, uh, The Far Side. Um, I can't think of who else, but somehow I, I, I missed Wu-Tang. So I got into Wu-Tang around the first or second year of university, but like their catalog is so big. So I found that it's more of like the individual characters that I gravitate towards. So I'll find like, um, I love ODB's features. I listen to a lot of, um, because the RZA is so involved in movies and like um, productions. Like now mm -hmm. I, I know which, which shows on Netflix are produced by him. I'm like, yeah, I can, I tell, I can tell that that's just right there because sometimes he'll produce like, there's this show, I think it's called Kipo. It's like a, an anime and oh, cool. he's not only producing the, the soundtrack, but he also plays one of the characters. And it's just so funny hearing him talk because I think his character is like a wolf or something like that. And it's like hearing his voice and seeing <laughs> and seeing the like an animated dog talk. I'm like, that's that's wild. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, my appreciation for Wu-Tang has come kind of late, but they're awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check out that anime. I remember he did one many years ago I watched called Afro Samurai. Yes, and, uh, that's one yeah. on my list. I haven't watched it yet either, but it's, oh, it's crazy. It's pretty it's, good. It's an easy watch too. It's like yeah. only two seasons and like the nice. first season's like uh, episodic and the second season is just like, I think it's just a, a movie follow-up and okay. it's okay. such a dope concept nice. and it's just... Oh, uh, it's like uh, I don't, I don't want to spoil it for you. Okay, but okay, all right. Just I'll like the beats are like so hip hop, but it's also like it feels like just this samurai like journey that's just absolutely over the top and ridiculous. And nice. There's a Samuel L. Jackson is in it voicing it too. Oh, but, wow. uh, the character <laughs> he does the Afro samurai just like he's very quiet and lets like his fighting do all the talking. So maybe he gets like one line an episode, just like, yeah. shut up or <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> Which makes it even doper. Like, yeah. Especially in Samuel L's voice. Like, yeah, yeah. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's so cool. Even though, awesome. um, yeah, it's cool that uh, you, you mentioned like you heard like all the side projects around Wu-Tang and uh, I heard mm -hmm. an interesting fact uh that when they made the Wu-Tang Clan, like if mm -hmm. they were signed to 
their main label mm -hmm. but then like jizza was like okay so if you guys want to do side projects go to different labels like we don't care yeah. like you're yeah. not our property yeah. and then they they ended up like everybody was on like every major label in new york that usually like competes against each other but it's just yeah. like they sprinkled the wu-tang clan around and it was like almost like a street strategic thing to just yeah. kind of make the brand bigger and yeah even i noticed in toronto like it's almost like a hipster thing to wear like the wu-tang shirt too like yeah i see them like at the record store next door and it's just like everybody's got wu-tang shirts on too and it's like i wonder if they actually like dove deep into the songs or it's just like an iconic like cool logo now and everything true true and i think yeah. it's it's definitely like um artists like logic and drake kind of mm -hmm. um bringing wu-tang to like um the younger generation because they they love wu-tang i think um remember drake has got that song wu-tang forever yeah. um and i think he sampled a couple of other of their songs so like that i guess might explain why they're so big in toronto um and then yeah like but it is really cool like everywhere you go like you said <laughs> you just see the huge w the iconic w it's really cool yeah definitely definitely and um it's yeah it's interesting you mentioned drake and like i feel like just like this generation of hip-hop and r&b a lot of the mainstream stuff is coming out of canada as well mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. it's very healthy and i feel like back in the day it was very there was very few you know it was like yeah. harder to break into that american market where i guess where all the money is <laughs> yeah <laughs> as yeah. i hear from canadian <laughs> artists but uh, <laughs> i don't know it's a, i feel like it's a good time to be like part of the canadian hip-hop community and would you agree with that as well yes no 100 percent. i feel like um all art has intersections right where you know um once you become a certain level of artist you know you can invest more in your visuals you can invest more in um the kind of performances you do so i think it's taken some time for music to 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 really get to that point or at least hip-hop but I find that, you know, now that the film industry, especially like in places like Alberta, is now picking up, everything else is picking up as well. So you've got anyone who does uh, makeup, anyone who does photography, videography, and obviously artists as well, because you're going to need music for these um, these movies. So it's a great time to be an artist in, in, in Canada right now, because all these films were being filmed in Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver anyway, but now it's coming to Alberta as well. And I feel like because there's so many artists in the US anyway, being from Canada now makes you a bit more uh, unique. And also your story to tell is a bit more, um, it's unique, but also I feel like it might be a bit more relatable too, since Canada has so many different nationalities in its, its population that your experience is probably similar to anyone who's across the waters. You know, you might be talking from an Afro-Canadian perspective. You might be, so in my, in my um, situation, I'm from Zimbabwe. So I might be speaking of the Canadian experience, but from a Zimbabwean perspective. So when I sing in Shana in one of my songs, people from Zimbabwe get it. People who are in Southern Africa might experience it as well. Um, so yeah, fantastic time to be an artist in Canada, I feel. Yeah, definitely yeah. Uh, all the diversity. And uh, when did you move here from Zimbabwe? I've been here since 2015. So Oh, this so is this is recent. Six. Oh yeah, very, very recent. I've, uh, wow. I came from university, I uh, graduated last year, and now I'm just working full-time and being an artist. Oh, that's amazing too. And yeah. uh, what kind of gravitated you to Calgary? Was it for school or? Uh, so funny story uh so being an artist I was like I want to go to the city that is going to have a lot of like music stuff going on and I don't know whether this is true now but when I google searched Calgary it came up as um Canada's festival city I was like oh if there's yeah. got lots of festivals that's stuff to do outside of school and if I become good enough to perform at festivals then I've got lots of opportunities I didn't realize until I arrived that they were talking about folk and country music. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm big, like, big country with a Calgary <laughs> stampede. And everything. Yeah. So I'm like, no problem with those genres. I'm just not in that field of music. Yeah. And you know what? I think that is a great thing. Yeah. I believe that'll make you stand out more. Yeah. Because I yeah. find in Toronto, everybody's a rapper, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it's, no, it's like an oversaturation. And it's just, yeah it's almost like it's harder to get that look 
mm-hmm. where I I don't know like because I don't I don't live in the Calgary scene or whatever, but I feel yeah. like it would be a benefit for you. It's just be like, oh, you're the rapper guy, you know? Like, yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah. the one of one of four or something. One like, of four. Like, you know, yeah. it's a, it's I I think that's a a strong interesting thing. It is. And something I've been saying to all the Calgary artists that I, that I, that I interact with is that, look, guys, um, a lot of us have been disappearing to Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, where you're just going to compete with a whole bunch of people that are already there. Mm-hmm. Or if you stay long enough, you know, the Calgary scene will grow and you get to be part of the founding fathers of that. You know, when yeah. people talk about Calgary hip hop, they're like, oh, xyz artists were some of the first you might not end up being the biggest out of calgary but they'll never be able to remove your name from history in terms of calgary hip-hop whereas if you go to toronto in order to um have a name that's sustainable in the toronto rap scene you don't have to do like really well and you're competing against people like drake nav the weekend like there's already well-established people there and there's a well-established sound Right now, Calgary doesn't have a sound yet. So, you know, you could be the person to create that or help discover that. Um, so there's a lot of um, benefit to be, to like the, we've got a plain canvas right now. You know, you can kind of do an experiment and define what Calgary hip hop becomes. Yeah, all facts. And I believe, yeah, there's definitely um, strength in building your own scene. Mm-hmm. And one one thing I got to be a fly on the wall for is a, uh, I'm a videographer for a, a battle rap league called King of the Dot. Nice. And, um, I know KT, uh, I was KOTD. KOTD. Yeah. KOTD. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I was like, it's a, it's, it's not as easy an acronym to say as I thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know King of yeah. the Dot. That's awesome. But um, it's, it's crazy when I met them um, almost a decade ago, it was like hip hop's always been a big thing in Toronto, mm-hmm. but the battle rap scene in the U S started popping off and there wasn't really um, a format over here and yeah. they just started doing them in alleys. And then next <laughs> thing you know, when I met them, they were doing like in small venues and then it's growing. They're doing theaters, the biggest clubs. And, and now it's a uh, King of the dot. It's barely in Toronto, which is weird yeah. because it's called King of it's the still dot. King of the dot. And now, it's, <laughs> now it's LA atlanta and new york and that's basically because of like the pandemic and all like the best artists are in the states so it doesn't yeah. make sense for them to or they can't even get over the border here yeah but it's just like seeing the power of building your own lane is i don't know like the opportunities can grow anywhere you know it's yeah. uh even to places you don't even um expect so yeah because it's, it's in the cool philippines as well talking. too right yeah. just under a different name but i'm pretty sure it's in the philippines it's in russia it's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's actually in the philippines yeah the it's called flip top yes and, that's the um, one they actually get the most views in the entire world it's what? like they can post a battle like and it's crazy because uh there's a there's one league like that's kind of a rival to king of the dot and yeah they're they're called the url and they're new york based and Mm -hmm. they get they they act like they are the biggest thing in the entire world and they are amazing not to like throw shade or whatever but like you click on one of these flip top battles in the philippines yeah and it's like within an hour it's already got like a million views like lots of these these lots of their battles like get like 14 million views and just everybody over there watches it and they don't call it battle rap over there. They call it flip top, like yeah. the name of the league. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and I clicked on a couple and uh, it's just like, I don't understand the language, but it's still like really, really cool to see. And like, it's almost, it's, it's so interesting what goes on overseas that we don't know about here yeah. because we're so into our own bubble and everything. Yeah. Was, was anything like really popping in Zimbabwe? that's like we don't know about over here or uh not yet so this has been very strange like this is the the one weird part where um so when i was still in zimbabwe hip-hop was not a major genre um because the country is fairly conservative and hip-hop tends to cover you know a lot of sexual and explicit content so it was kind of shunned upon it back home and then i came here and so while I was home, the predominant genre was uh, dancehall, 
which I found kind of contradictory because I'm like, dancehall is fairly provocative too because it's got mm-hmm. Jamaican roots and they're talking about winding on booty and stuff like that. So I'm like, uh, yeah, okay. The way they dance it, it's all like, <laughs> I see these, some of these videos, it's all like humping and like wrestling body slams and elbow yeah, drops. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That dag rig seems very dangerous. But I'm like, hey, teach your own. It looks like fun. Um, yeah. So dancehall is pretty big. So funny enough, once I got into Canada, hip hop started growing in Zimbabwe. So now we've got a couple of artists that have now toured the UK, uh, have done really well in South Africa. Um, so the, there's a lot of creatives in, in Zimbabwe. It's just that we're not doing well economically. And that's the only reason why there's nothing major coming. Um, there's nothing major happening in Zimbabwe, but there's a lot of major acts that come out of Zimbabwe. Mm. So uh, for example, there's a couple of producers in the US, like um, Brian Soko, he produced Drunk in Love, um, the Beyonce song, and I think he won a Grammy. He is Uh There's another guy, Dr. Chai. I actually went to high school with him. He was a couple of years uh, older than me. And he's got writing credits on pretty much any superstar you can think of. Sean Paul, Chris Brown, Usher, Nicki Minaj. And again, he's Zimbabwean. But what ends up happening is that because we don't have enough resources for their level of talent, they end up being exported to other countries and, and like building that country's musical scene. And that's another reason why I like I'm so passionate about Calgary artists staying because I'm like, look, guys, I've seen this happening in my country where you have all the talented people and they go and like it's dope because obviously if you're talented, you want to receive the level of recognition and um, finance that like matches your 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 potential. But it's also like, but you, if you keep doing that, you're taking away the potential for your space to grow because all the talented people are leaving. Therefore, no one's going to invest internally. They're going to invest outside, right? And I think even for artists in Toronto, Vancouver, it's important that they stay still within Toronto, Vancouver and not immigrate to the States because again, people will stop investing in Canada because everyone's in the South, right? Yeah, that's very true. I, I feel like uh, back in the day, um, Canadian artists were really trying to get out of here and now mm-hmm. it's I don't know it's I'm not deep in the roots of the music industry but it's yeah. like it seems like people are staying now so yeah I don't know whether it's funding or better marketing or whatnot but there's there's got to be like a bigger reason why people are staying now and being happy here because before yeah. it's just like I need to get out of here and break in LA or New yeah. York or whatever yeah. Yeah. I believe like that's where like the funding used to be in the bigger labels, but now uh, it seems like Canada's getting a bit of a more credibility and a better mm-hmm. look now, which yes. is is great for people like you too doing yeah. your thing. Because <laughs> exactly. who exactly. knows where this can take it, like to the the next step. And it seems like you have like such a a, a mind that looks ahead, like beyond the track. You know, like you're yeah. very conceptual too, and even talking about uh, like the film industry in Calgary mm-hmm. and stuff, I feel like wh- how you create music and stuff, that would be like a perfect match of whether it's like making like a music video with a story or like you scoring films or whatnot. Is that something you'd like to explore someday or? Definitely part of the, the, the plan right now. Right on, um, I right find on. like, Again, we're talking about stories. And I think um, if you can make a song that is associated with a movie, you know, that song is forever immortalized, like in people's lives, right? Because this could be a pivotal cult, like pop culture moment for this movie, or just the fact that, I don't know, if it's, let's say, a romantic movie and you have that one song that people remember from the movie, you know, it then ends up playing at weddings because people think of this movie. It ends up playing at, um, you know, it might be the slow part of a, of a high school dance because everybody knows this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, no, the scoring, well, I, I don't know if I would score, but like being able to write songs for soundtracks uh, to movies would be so cool, especially because it's becoming the norm for most movies now. I think before uh, you'd have like a Hans Zimmer or someone who's specifically um, musical within movies, doing this, the music around the movie and the music to market the movie. But now you've got Kendrick Lamar doing his own albums. You've got uh, Beyonce doing albums for, for Lion King. I'm like, cool, artists are allowed to do whatever they want now. So I would love to get in on a movie and just kind of even if it's not me making the music, but just curate it. Because I think that's something that mm. I really enjoyed with this artist, this album too, where, 
of course, these are all my songs, but half the work was getting the right voice on each song and trying to bring out the best in their verse. So obviously everyone wrote their own stuff, but I'm like, okay, try this, try that. And I'm like, cool, now you're good. Like the song is where it needs to be. So yeah, that would be, that would be awesome to get yeah, that's like, great. songs and movies or shows. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, I, I like how your brain kind of works. Uh, the project manager, it's beyond just the rapper. Or, yeah, like, everything like that. Um, it's cool to have uh, that kind of vision. And uh, it shows in in plus vice, like, yeah, the, the piece you made together. And that's awesome. And yeah, like for people who want to check that out, October 22nd, right? It's 22nd. Dropping. Yeah, we're just under a month away. I am so excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And actually, I think I'm going to delay this interview and uh, put it out like the week of too. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, so, um, yeah that's also, I also chose like, when does this one come out? I don't know what to say, what yeah. not to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for people to hear that too. And uh, And yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, or it's actually unfortunate that uh, mm-hmm. there's like a lockdown going on right now, like on mm-hmm. and off and everything. And cause uh, did you imagine like touring this or like doing more like album releases or something around it? So this is the question that keeps being asked of me every day yeah. <laughs> by like, like friends who are on and like, so are we performing this live? Or what are we doing with this? And like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, day yeah. by day, right? <laughs> day by day. So Essentially, um, what I'm what I'm currently planning is to do a live event, but have a digital option, just so that in case we do go into another lockdown within the next month, at least we can still do it. Uh, it would be dope to like tour around and play this because I've actually never toured; I've only performed within Calgary. So part of what I've been doing, um, as well as uh, pushing the music, is just trying to grow my relationships with people outside of this province. So I've got a couple of friends in Toronto, a couple of friends in Vancouver and like, hey, if you're doing like an open mic show or something and you need like support, let me know and I'll come and perform for your show. Um, again, depending on what uh, COVID restrictions are like at the time. But if possible, I'd definitely love to do that. If not, what I'd probably do is just hold off on it until next year. I think next year might, I'm hoping <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's an easier yeah. year to manage um, and then you know, see what I can do with it next year. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of visual content I've, I've worked on. So like a couple of music videos, we've got trailers coming out soon. So even if I don't end up being able to perform it everywhere, there are visual pieces alongside the album as well. Yeah, that's great. Cause you gotta yeah. celebrate it, man. You, you gotta, gotta celebrate. celebrate it. Oh yeah. And I mean, even if we don't end up doing like a public event, I'll definitely have like friends over. We'll, we'll, we'll do something. We'll definitely do something because I'm very, this is definitely like my, uh the body of work that i'm most proud of up to this date i think it's it's, it's just dope i like it yeah that's awesome i like it too and Thank uh, you. <laughs> for, for people who want to follow you or check you out uh where where can they uh they add you like on instagram and everything i would recommend instagram it's uh the platform i'm most active on and most of like the fun stuff that i post is on instagram uh, I'm most available on Facebook and TikTok. So for all social media stuff, if you just look up K the Chosen, uh, all is one word, it should come up. Uh, streaming platforms, I had a bit of like an issue with them because I'd released a song as K the Chosen before I'd made my artist Spotify. Um, like I was featured on a friend's project and it was, like, oh, this K the Chosen is, cho- was, is taken. You can't be this K the Chosen. I'm like, there's only one. So, oh, oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> so streaming platforms is still K the Chosen, but with spaces. So like K space, the space chosen. Um, but yeah, so that's where you can find the music. But I would recommend Instagram. I think I do a lot of fun stuff there. Uh, so you don't want to miss out on that because like outside of the music, I'll do freestyle videos. I'll do like, a couple of tutorials on like this is what you can do as a musician if you're an independent musician this is how you can work on your marketing and branding so i think there's a lot of value there and my inbox is usually open so if you want to collaborate or you want to tell me what you thought about the album instagram is the best place that's awesome so yeah. you heard them follow them in october me, 22nd man. get that <laughs> album awesome yeah well it was yeah. very nice to meet you this was such a pleasant chat man i, I love uh having these type of conversations early in my day always puts me in a selfishly, even though we're promoting you, it puts me in a good mood to just talk about art and people's crafts and everything. And it was amazing to hear you um, like kind of behind the scenes, how you put this great piece together and everything. So yeah, definitely uh, keep in touch and 
for the next one we'll have you back on as well for sure no it was, it's been dope to meet you and just like I, I think it's mutual like I love talking about the art and I love the, the questions you ask and just even the fact that you know um you've got so much experience not just around music but within visuals and like any other artistic pursuits so it's always awesome to hear what other people are up to and I'm glad that you genuinely like the album and yeah it was a great conversation so thanks for having me Thanks again to Kay the Chosen for hanging out with us today. Like we mentioned, October 22nd, Friday. If you're listening to this episode the day it's released, that's tomorrow, his new album, Plus Vice. Go check it out. And like always, before we go, I gotta thank all you absolute legends on the Patreon. First up, the co-producer, Jeremy Hopkin of Hopkin Design, Ola Mazuka of Sonic Fold, Ryan Watkins of Ryan Radio, Amanda McKnight of Top 10 Nerd, Pat Maloney, Ryan Campbell, Danielson, Devin Staple, Mike Ulio, Jenny Potter, The New Edition, thanks, Jesus Christ, there is hammering upstairs as I'm trying to record this, but... (laughs) Okay, let's get back on track. Jenny Potter, the new edition. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Also, Jared Pepper Bronstein, a.k.a. Mr. Spicy, and Francis Coffer, a.k.a. My Mom. Once again, thank you all for supporting the show. And if you at home want to shout out at the end of each and every one of these episodes and get the episodes extra early, you can sign up to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the creative imbalance it's only three dollars a month and every cent helps and goes right into this show so thank you so much and we'll catch you next time i was memorizing facts instead of learning how to learn if you understand tax you understand how to earn instead we hold urns for bridges that we burn connections we have lost every time that we turn our back to a competitor can only be one but if we team up the game can only be one man we